Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a grand solar minimum update Monday, April 5th, around 11 p.m. Mountain Time 2021. The models are in heavy snow headed for Wyoming. But the big story, UAH satellite based temperatures are in and it is cold, baby. In fact, the temperature has dropped half a degree centigrade in the last year. Keep calm, it's boom time. All of global warming erased as rain and snow through Tuesday morning in Bozeman, Montana are a disgrace. As well as Miss Michigan's skimpy snow totals are in and one of the snowiest cities has the least snow on record. But that's not true for the rest of the continent. Cascade snow, the depth of 109% to 160% of normal as snow total mass for the northern hemisphere leaps 500 gigatons above the 1982 to 2012 average. Holy macaroni. New storm to bring severe weather to central and southern U.S. with record heat for millions. Record heat, record snow. Grand solar minimum much, severe thunderstorms in the central U.S., critical fire weather in the southern high plains. That's the big story here. Red flag warnings for thousands of square miles. Severe thunderstorms are possible over portions of the central plains, and the threat will move into the lower Mississippi Valley on Wednesday. Elevated to critical fire weather conditions are forecast over portions of the southern high plains and the southern Rockies. Do not flick cigarette butts out of the window if you're in the pink zone. And let's get to the models and walk them through. There is still snow in the forecast, even though it's April. Here we are through Tuesday, and that's the big snow moving into western Wyoming, southern Montana, and you can see it there. Snow moving into British Columbia. By Thursday, it'll be moving down into Washington State and into Oregon. Hello. And it's looking fine. A second system is moving through next week on Monday, April 12th. Add insult to injury through South Dakota, North Dakota, and Wyoming picking up more totals in the high mountains. Holy mackerelie. And then the Sierras all the way down to the southern areas could be picking up snow in the third week of April at Maine, a little tippy touch. So that's your forecast. Quick overview, plummeting temperatures, wintry showers to overspread much of Europe as predicted over a week ago. And uh, we understand record high temperatures for March were broken across parts of Europe on the final day of the month. But as storm eyeing the region will bring more winter like conditions and below normal temperatures into the same areas. Totally scary. On Easter Sunday, for instance, a drastic change in the weather pattern began across northwestern Europe. Easter bunny eggs froze beneath the bushes. And a storm near Scandinavia will drag a cold front across the UK and Ireland through Sunday night. That's their plight. Anyone headed to church in celebration of Easter across Scotland, Northern Ireland and far north England had to prepare for showers as well as cooler weather. The cold front continued advancing across France and Germany on Monday, which was their fun day, ushering in areas of showers as well as drastically cooler temperatures compared to the end of March. I need a drink. I think I'm parched. <laughs> no tsunami threat after earthquake shakes Mauna Loa earlier in the week was a tweak, but an ongoing magma surge in the upper mantle beneath the island of Hawaii leads many geologists with, well, with pause. Because what that means is that Mauna Loa is recharging. Seismic update, no quakes of note. 4.6 just kicking off in Chile. Blot echo depth, so keep a close eye on the Chilean region. No other quakes of note, except this big banger. The 6.0 offshore of New Zealand, 193 kilometers northeast of Gisborne. Did you feel it? I didn't. I was far away. F photographer captures aurora over Iceland's erupting volcano. And this is fantastic. This is the Glendingalda Valley, which now has a new fissure, which just ruptured 24 hours ago. And you can see that seismic tremor increasing. Boom, right there. Adding insult to injury on the Reckianus Ridge, hikers scramble as a new fissure opens up at the volcano. Over 1.2 kilometers in length, 
in three parts now erupting. Update on the eruption in Fagradros Fall, including the Glendengalde Valley. The most recent update coming from Iceland Geology. There has been a slight increase in micro earthquake activity. We just showed you that along the dike after the new fissure opened in Fagradros Fall over 24 hours ago now. It has been reported the lava flow from the new and old eruption site is now more than double. Like a bubble, craters are building up at the new eruption site. New lava flow is flowing into a new valley, which is now filling. And we have the footage. By the way, we did a, an amazing update on magnetic reversal news that you can watch. Similar footage with a more comprehensive update, if you like. There's the new fissure, the main area here, extending for uh, two, 300 feet, secondary areas to the right. The Glendon Galdo Valley off in the distance. Here is that Fagradosva or Khalil Mountain, I believe. And then we're going to follow the lava flow down into the valley here, where it will meet a lake or a reservoir uh, in the distance here, which would immediately boil off in a catastrophic phreatic, phreatomagmatic event, which we're waiting for, because this is going to be happening in the next 48 hours or so, in my opinion, could be 72. The lava has to spread through the valley, dump down here, and then hit that water. But in just the first day, the impressive lava river forming here is, well, it is spectacular beyond belief from a geologist's standpoint. It is absolutely grandiose and just an amazing high definition videos with uh, drone footage to study what actually happens during these uh, lava rivers. And here you can see the deposition into the valley below. Absolutely fantastic. So big thumbs up there for the footage from the Iceland locals. Worldwide Volcano News Update. That's not all that's happening. We've got Sabankaya, Swanosima, Tucono, Reventador, Tucono puffing to 7,000 feet, Sabankaya going to 27,000, Reventador to 15,000, Sangay to 19,000, and the fissure. There it is. Newly erupted fissure today, approximately one kilometers northeast of the so far active eruption site. Check it out, the update on magnetic reversal news for more footage. Scientists now warning of a possible solar megastorm. Yeah. And this is all coming from the 1582 mega storm, massive solar storm that hit Earth. A very powerful solar storm hit Earth back in 1582. Did I say 1852? 1582. A great fire appeared in the sky to the north and lasted three nights, wrote a Portuguese scribe in early March 1582. Across the globe in feudal Japan, observers in Kyoto noted the same fiery red display in their skies too. Similar accounts of strange nighttime lights were recorded in Leipzig, Germany, Gichong, South Korea, and a dozen other cities across Europe and East Asia. You want to know more? Links will be below. Portuguese eyewitness accounts of the great space weather events of 1582 recently uncovered by scientists, and this is fascinating information, corroborating what we've already been warning you about. And this one submitted 17th March, 2021. That's how recent we are. New study ties solar variability to the onset of decadal La Nina events. These are the Enso cycles. La Nina, El Nino, and so, and so it is that the geologic record records these in antiquity for millions of years. This has been going on forever. I've seen, they're called varves that you can go study in the stratigraphic record that are very convincing. So the sun has always controlled our weather for millions of years. Don't believe another thing. The edge of space just crept 12 miles closer. I think we've noted this but if you want to see an update on the closeness of space yep it's just about 10 miles up the role of geomagnetic field intensity in late quaternary evolution of humans in large mammals a lot of people are wondering where this link is well it's going to be linked below again tonight and this is a very high definition expose on mammalian phylogeny i know those are big words but it's basically an evolutionary model of what magnetic excursions do to populations in 
the paleontological record. Well, they cause mass extinctions. There are animals that last for periods or hominids, and they die off when the field strength shifts rapidly. Rapid shifts in field strength equal evolution. And that's a boom illusion. The day when glass rained upon the earth. Well, it's coming out now. The extinction of the dinosaurs 66 million years ago may not have been a comet at all. Recent studies in Antarctica show that a new type of comet or astronomical debris entered the atmosphere causing a plasma discharge. Did they actually say that? Yeah. Well, in this paper, 66 million years ago, microspherules and tectites rained down on Earth. Glass rained down on Earth, which could be, well, plasma discharge, yo. I'm going to let the dog in. Give me a second. And we're back. Dog's out and glass is raining from the sky. <laughs> Who knew? A day is not exactly 24 hours. And in fact, the Earth is speeding up as predicted the exact day length is ever increasing now how long is today well minus 13 milliseconds faster yesterday today minus only minus 8 milliseconds but overall we're looking at 105 milliseconds faster than ever recorded in history this is after the Earth had been slowing down for quite some time. A rapid increase in speed, which is predicted during magnetic excursions, crustal slip, and cosmic catastrophe events. Are you picking up what we're putting down? Well, 2,400 years ago, solid gold bongs were used by kings to smoke pot. They were certainly picking it up. These bongs are some of the most fantastic bongs on the entire Earth. And I got to get my hands on one. Hope you got something out of the video. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. When the disinformation machine and the propaganda element is completely saturating your noggin with disinformation, the world we live in is collapsing around you as the elites try to gain more power. A big shout out to John Christie, one of our big donors today. That's a boom. He just purchased five honeyberry plants that we'll be planting in our permaculture orchard for you live on air in just about two weeks. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our Patreons. Become a Patreon, give a small amount each month and make a big difference in the content that you're viewing. We can't do this without your support. Thanks to all the one-time donors, our Patreons, those people that share this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and be safe. We love you. That's a boom to knowledge. Na, 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 na.